Amen. And didn't they do well? Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, choir, for ministering to us this morning. Let's turn in our Bibles this morning to Psalm 27. Good to be back. Amen. Good to see you all. Looking well. I was meditating on this psalm while on holiday. Got up early in the morning, read it, and 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 thought about it, and thought about it. I just want to share with you some of the things we were meditating upon whilst on vacation. Psalm 27, and we'll read the psalm. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me. In this, I will be confident. Verse 4. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek. What is it? That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, note this, to behold the beauty, the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord, listen, will take care of me. Isn't that fantastic? When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. May the Lord bless to us the words of that beautiful psalm from God's own precious word. Let's pray, shall we? Our gracious Father, this morning we thank you for the privilege of again being in the house of the Lord. And we come to the Lord of the house this morning and we just ask, would you bless the reading of thy word, those 14 verses, bless them to our hearts. And as we share something from them this morning, may thy people be edified, may they be built up, may they be encouraged, may they be exhorted, may they be helped. And may our walk with God be close. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Despite becoming a king, and despite living nearly 3,000 years ago, the individual who wrote this psalm was just like you 
and just like me in many, many, many ways. David, brothers and sisters, had his fair share of trials and troubles, but yet he lived for God. Yet he made and left his mark. Yet he persevered to the end. And when Christ returns, he will receive an incorruptible crown, which will never fade away. As a youth, because he was the youngest of the family, the family did not consider David important. He was overlooked. He had his giants to confront, and he also had his giants to kill. David also had his troubles with his boss. Have you got trouble with your boss and you're dreading Monday morning? David also had trouble with his father-in-law. David, brothers and sisters, had marriage problems. David had seasons when things were against him and when absolutely nothing went according to plan. David, brothers and sisters, also had children, children who broke his heart. David experienced the tears of bereavement. David endured bouts of illness. David experienced times of loss. David had friends who he loved, and yet who disappointed him and failed him and deserted him. David, brothers and sisters, made mistakes. There was times when David lived like a demon. There was other times when David lived like an angel. Brothers and sisters, there was times when David knew what it was for God to severely and sorely chastise him. But there was also times when David knew what it was for God to greatly bless him and make him and his family promises. Brothers and sisters, he knew what it was to take two steps forward and also to take one step back. He knew what it was to yield to temptation. He knew what it was to grow in God's grace. Yet, brothers and sisters, he fought the fight. He finished the course. He kept the faith. How would you manage to do that when you went through all that David went through, he reveals some of the secrets to winning in life in this marvelous 27th Psalm. I want you to notice, first of all, this morning, in this Psalm, we have the foundation of a godly life. The foundation of a godly life. In verses 1 to 3, David sets forth, he makes it clear what is the foundation of a godly life. A foundation, brothers and sisters, that ensures that the life that you build and the life that you live will not collapse, will not fold up when the storms and trials of life arrive. Listen to what he says. The Lord the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When there's trouble at work, when there's trouble at home, when there's trouble with the finances, when there's trouble all around, David was able to say, the Lord is the strength of my life. That's how David made it to the end and could say, I have finished the course. Thirteen times in these 14 verses, David uses the word Lord. Thirteen times. Notice, brothers and sisters, if you're following it this morning, notice how each letter in the word Lord is all capitals. It's a capital L, it's a capital O, it's a capital R, and it's a capital D. And that is not a printer's error. That is deliberate. All the letters and capitals reveals that this word is translated from the Hebrew name for God, Yahweh. 
sometimes we use the word Jehovah. Now, what is the name Yahweh? What does the name Jehovah reveal about this person with whom we have to do and who we worship and who we have remembered this morning? What does it mean? Well, first of all, Yahweh is God's covenant name. When you come before the minister on your big day and your bride walks down the aisle on the arm of her father, you make a covenant to each other. But when you stand or you kneel before God in repentance, and you ask him to come into your heart and into your life, that God enters into a covenant with you, that he will save you, that he will forgive you, that he will pardon you, that he will keep you, that he will bless you, that he will ensure that you make it to the end. So when you trust him this morning, you enter into a covenant with him. But what does the name Jehovah mean? We told the people at the Bible study this a few weeks ago, the name Jehovah means this God is the self-existing one. You and I need lots of things to exist. For example, we need oxygen to exist. If I cut off your oxygen supply, you'll not last long. We need water. We need food. We need heat. We need light. But the God that we come to, the God that we love, the God that we serve, he needs nothing and he needs no one in order to exist. And David is saying, this is the one who is the strength of my life. Not only does Jehovah mean the self-existing one, it means he is the unchanging one. Every one of us here this morning has changed from last Lord's day. But this God that David had entered into a covenant with, this God never changes. And thirdly and finally, he is also the God who is the eternal one. He's here today. He's here tomorrow. He's the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the ending. There will never be a time when this God will not be. And David here is saying in the opening verses of this psalm, David is saying, if you want to win at the game of life, if you want to survive, and sometimes that's what life's about. It's about surviving. Some people think it's if I manage to keep my head above the water, that's all I can expect, that's all I can ask. But brothers and sisters, it's more than that. If you want to win at the game of life and survive the trials of life, if you plan to avoid the fiery darts of the wicked one, if you intend to hear heaven's well done, then the Lord must be your foundation. And when he is, when darkness surrounds you, he will be your light. He will be your salvation. He will be your strength. The wicked and the foes and wars may come against the castle of your heart, but brothers and sisters, fear will not win the day. David announces, though an army may encamp, against me, my heart shall not fear. Will you say amen? Why? Because he was able to say the Lord, Jehovah, Yahweh, is the strength of my life. Here's the foundation of a godly life. Question, what is your life built upon this morning? What is your life built upon this morning? Is it built upon a reputation of being a hard man? Is it built upon a tissue of lies and deceit? Those are the wrong things. Friend, this morning you've got to be able to truthfully say, the Lord. Who? The Lord is, the, is my light and my salvation, listen, Jesus is my light, and Jesus is my salvation. Will you say amen?